guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be going into detail about the use of spironolactone for the treatment of female pattern hair loss. What is female pattern hair loss? It's the most common cause of hair loss in women, and it also can happen in men. It's referred to as pattern hair loss or androgenetic alopecia, and this is basically a sensitivity of the hair follicle to the male hormones testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Basically, the hairs start uh, miniaturizing as a result of exposure to testosterone levels in the body. Female pattern hair loss affects about 40% of women by the age of 50, and the only FDA-approved treatment for female pattern hair loss is topical minoxidil, aka Rogaine, uh, something that you have to apply to the scalp. It can be irritating and, and cause dryness and irritation, um, but dermatologists, myself included, use a medication called spironolactone off-label for the treatment of female pattern hair loss. What is spironolactone? Well, it's actually a blood pressure medication, but it also has some other effects that make it helpful for treating hair loss in women. Specifically, it has anti-androgen effect. And so spironolactone competes with testosterone and dihydrotestosterone for the androgen receptor. Spironolactone also uh, lowers the cofactor required for testosterone synthesis and it helps lower the amount of testosterone in the body. So for women, this is helpful for treating not only hair loss, but there are a variety of other skin conditions that we use it for in women. And I have another video on spironolactone in terms of acne, so I'll link that down below. But anyways, I digress. Uh, this medication, you might ask, why can it not be used then to treat pattern hair loss in men? Um, unfortunately, if you use it in men, it has uh, negative side effects of gynecomastia, aka breast development, and uh, profound uh, impact on the libido. So it's not used in men, but it is used to treat pattern hair loss in women. Spironolactone is actually pretty effective for female pattern hair loss. It doesn't work for everybody, but it, it can be effective. About 75% of women taking spironolactone in large studies reported either an improvement in their hair loss, or at the very least, their hair loss did not continue to worsen. Overall, it seems to be effective in about 40% of women, and it can prevent further hair loss as well as result in thickening of the hair. For the treatment of female pattern hair loss, the dosage for of spironolactone is 100 to 200 milligrams per day, uh, given in divided doses. So if for example, 50 milligrams in the morning and 50 milligrams in the evening. It takes a long time to see results, at least six months, but at a year, you will really start to see results. And studies show and experience shows that people who stay on it over a year see the best results. Also, spironolactone can be used along with other hair loss treatments to get even better results. In studies, people who had been using minoxidil, which as I said at the beginning of the video is the only FDA approved treatment for pattern hair loss, women who had been using minoxidil for a long time and had reached a plateau with the minoxidil, when they added on spironolactone, they saw even additional improvement in their hair in their hair density and arrest and hair loss. So it can be used with minoxidil and it also can be used with low level laser therapy. You guys know I am a huge fan of the iRestore low level laser therapy uh, device and it can be combined with spironolactone as well as minoxidil. For hair loss, spironolactone arrests hair loss progression and it has a favorable long-term safety profile. How long do you have to take it? Well, people who take it for a year, at least a year, see the best results, and it does need to be continued long term in order to continue to maintain those results. Um, you can, in, in many people, the dosage can be dropped after results are achieved as kind of a maintenance dose, but it does need to be continued. This is only arresting the hair loss process. When it's stopped, that will resume because those androgen receptors are now free to see the testosterone and dihydrotestosterone in the body. And so the hair loss will, will ensue when the medication is stopped. But when it comes to stopping the medication, it's not as though you stop the medication and the next few weeks, all of your hair falls out. It's really, you stop the medication and now you're going to have normal progression of pattern hair loss. Those hair follicles are gonna start seeing the testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and miniaturize as they would had you never been on it at, that, at, a, at, a, at a rate compatible with 
the nature of your pattern hair loss, but it's not gonna be an all at once thing, but it's not a cure. It merely arrests the process, and in arresting the process, you can get improvement in thickness and density. But it is a safe medication to take long-term. The long-term safety profile is very favorable. What are the side effects of taking spironolactone? They are dose dependent. And again, you are at a slightly higher dose here with treating hair loss as opposed to when spironolactone is used to treat acne, for example, we can get away with lower doses. But the, dose, the side effects are still pretty favorable. You can experience low blood pressure. If you are lying, if you get up in the middle of the night, make sure you get up kind of slowly because if you go from lying down to standing up very quickly, you may find that you experience some dizziness that's transient. That is a side effect, but so long as you get up slowly and you know take your time, it's it's okay. The body will normalize to that. You also can experience headaches. And because this is a blood pressure medication, it works as a diuretic, so it can make you go to the bathroom more frequently. This medication can raise your potassium levels, although in people who have normal renal function and otherwise are healthy, this is not an issue. As a matter of fact, we don't even really follow the potassium levels in patients on this all of the time unless they have a underlying medical condition or they're taking other medications that can affect the potassium levels in the body. So obviously discuss with your healthcare provider all the medications that you're taking. If you happen to be put on an antibiotic, um, let your dermatologist know. Some antibiotics can interfere with the potassium levels in the body, but otherwise in healthy people, it's generally not a problem. As an aside, I do always caution patients uh, to not go overboard with consuming coconut water or like a ton of bananas on a daily basis. Coconut water and bananas are high in potassium, so the last thing you want is to push yourself over the limit while you're on spironolactone. Um, but for the purposes of dermatology and the doses that we're using and the patients that we are treating with it, these with spironolactone who are otherwise healthy, this is not an issue. It can make you feel a little fatigued and it also can cause headache. These side effects though, they typically stabilize after a few months and that's the end of that. So long term, these things are less of an issue. The other side effects that can happen are menstrual irregularities with some spotting. You can also have breast tenderness and a slightly decrease in, decrease in libido. But these side effects also will stabilize and kind of res usually resolve after a few months, at least in my experience prescribing this medication off-label for both acne and hair loss. When you get the medication though, you will see a black box warning. So I'll tell you guys about that. The black box warning says uh, this medication um, has carcinogenic and mutagenic properties. Um, so what you have to understand about that black box warning, the FDA is required to put that there. Basically, that's, that's from animal studies where they put a mega dose of the medication into animals and there were you know, tumors and things that formed. Those doses are much, much higher than what is used to treat people and there has been, there's no evidence of any carcinogenic or mutagenic effect in people. There were two very large retrospective population-based studies uh, of women uh, that showed in 2.3 million women and then another study in 1.3 million women, no association with spironolactone and increased risk of breast, ovarian, uterine um, or cervical cancer. So it's safe, but do know that you're gonna see that black box warning there. That comes with a lot of medications. It's, it's based off of these animal studies and has not, has not proven to be the case in actual people with the doses that are used to treat different diseases, and in this case, hair loss. So while it's a very safe medication, it's not uh, safe in pregnancy. It is, uh, it can have, if you are pregnant, it can have negative consequences on the male fetus potentially. So it's contraindicated in pregnancy and it's not considered safe in breastfeeding either. A lot of people will ask, do you need to be on a birth control pill to take this? So it can help with the side effects of menstrual irregularities and then obviously it can help prevent pregnancy, which would be contraindicated 
while taking spironolactone, you'd want to stop before trying to become pregnant. So, so you know, taking birth control pills are frequently encouraged because of those reasons, but we actually don't have any studies that show adding birth control pills to spironolactone yields any better results in terms of pattern hair loss. In the case of acne, it does offer additional advantage for the acne control, but when it comes to hair loss, we don't have any studies that suggest that adding birth control really gets you any better in terms of your hair loss. Instead, adding things like minoxidil, low-level laser therapy, those other treatments will get you even better results with a hair loss along with spironolactone. Spironolactone is effective for pattern hair loss, but like any hair loss treatment, it's not gonna work for everybody. And it seems to work best when combined with other treatments. Spironolactone is only going to be effective for hair loss that is pattern hair loss. There are many other types of hair loss out there. So before even entertaining the idea of spironolactone, it's critical that you have an accurate diagnosis of your hair loss. It's not gonna work for the many other different types of hair loss out there. So for you, it's critical that you see a dermatologist and get an accurate diagnosis. People who present with hair loss, there is a workup that is typically done, uh, a biopsy, a scalp biopsy can be incredibly valuable to getting an accurate diagnosis. Um, also something called a hair pull test and then blood work to rule out something like a thyroid disease. Spironolactone is not gonna work for the majority of types of hair loss. It will work for some people with the most common type of hair loss, but it's not gonna work for the other types of hair loss. So the diagnosis is really important before even considering spironolactone. The last thing I will comment on is there is a boom of these direct to consumer online businesses where you can like submit a picture of your scalp and answer some questions about your medical history and like an online survey and they will prescribe you spironolactone, minoxidil, other things for hair loss. Uh, and not, it doesn't require you to see like a dermatologist in person. I am not a fan of these, you guys. I have to be frank with you. Don't get me wrong, uh, teledermatology is incredibly valuable, especially we're, we're you know, appreciating it even more with the, in light of the pandemic where a lot of people have not been able to go in to see a dermatologist. But it's not a substitute for seeing a dermatologist in person and there are certain things in dermatology for which it's not appropriate. I, I think they're doing consumers a huge disservice because getting an accurate diagnosis of your hair loss is so important. We know that having the correct diagnosis and treating that diagnosis early is, is pivotal to, to stopping the hair loss. Um, and giving you the best results long term. What if you think that you have pattern hair loss, but you really have ringworm uh, in the scalp? That's, th that's another cause of hair loss right there. That requires a totally different treatment. And so do yourself a huge service by seeing a dermatologist in person and getting an accurate diagnosis of your hair loss. That's everything I can tell you about spironolactone for hair loss, but comment below on if you would like a video on treatments for not hair loss, but uh, hair growth on the face, uh, hirsutism. I'd be happy to do that. Spironolactone is used off-label for hirsutism, and so I'd be happy to chat with you guys about it in another video. So let me know in the description, in the description box. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like a video on spironolactone for uh, hair growth on the face, aka hirsutism in women. Um, I would be happy to, to do that. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.